Yo, what's up guys? It's Winky here again. Um, if phase three is out, so we are going to update our Warlock AOE farming leveling and gold guide. As you can see in the background, here's an example of me running around farming my favorite spot to farm so far uh, in phase three with this build. Works extremely well still. I'm really excited with the changes that came with phase three. They've added a bunch of stuff uh, to make this build even more viable, even more fun, and now we have even more options to choose from. That being said, we're going to be talking about talents required to do this, the runes required to do this, and different options for different runes, and then I'm going to end it out with some tips. Based on the last video, I can talk about some uh, hot spots for leveling as well as hot spots for gold farming. If that's something that's interested in, that'll be at the end of the video. But I just want to bang this out real quick. I appreciate you guys. Without further ado, let's go look at the talents. All right, so here's our talent tree. Of course, we're gonna stay in the affliction tree. We're gonna go down five points of corruption, uh, first and foremost. Uh, improved drain life, of course. This is all per um, our phase two guide as well. At this point, you can really choose what you wanna go into. If you're leveling, uh, improved life tap is always really nice. You don't get very much value out of improved curse of agony. So I would recommend going improved life tap and then just throwing some points in suppression. Uh, just to get to the next tier here. Then we go Grim Reach, double Grim Reach, because the range is amazing and it feels really good. You can throw a point in Amplify Curse if you want. You can start putting things into um, Improved Curse of Agony if you want to. I still don't think you get the value out of it, to be honest. So I'm just gonna go five out of five into Suppression. We're gonna grab a point into Siphon Life. We're gonna grab a point into Curse of Exhaustion. Siphon Life, of course, is gonna open up this build greatly. Now, per the comments of the last video, I was told some people like running uh, this AoE Affliction build, or I guess Gigapole Affliction build. Some people got really mad at me calling it AoE. Nightfall is an option you can take if you don't plan on going meta. This is something that was brought up to me. People were running Shadow Bolt Volley and Nightfall procs, and they said that that was really good AoE damage um, if the survivability is not an issue for you. Personally, I'm still running meta, and in order for me to get down to Shadow Mastery, I just start dumping points in Improved Curse of Agony. But you could, if you wanted to, look into running Nightfall. Again, Fell Concentration is still useless. If you really like using Curse of Exhaustion, I don't. If you do, you could run Improved Curse of Exhaustion. I barely ever use Curse of Exhaustion. I just take it for if I'm kiting something big or anything like that. We're gonna go five points into Shadow Mastery and we are going to not take Dark Pack this time. This is an option. This time around, I'm not taking it. In phase two, I took it. It's up to you. If you find good use out of Dark Pack, that's totally up to you if you wanna use it. Uh, I'm gonna go into five points into Demonic Embrace from this point. Then I'm going to, depending on which pet I wanna use or for just w general all around use, I do just like five points of Fell Intellect, give your pet some, some mana, and then I put one point into Improved Syad. Syad, Syad, I don't know how to say that. But this is our build. I don't know if this is something that you guys have tried out yourself, or if this is what you landed on yourself. This is just what I landed on. Again, leave it in the comments, jump in the Discord. Let's have a discussion about the builds that you're running and what you like. I would love to have that conversation with you guys. The last video we made had a ton of really interesting comments and a lot of good dis discussion happening. If we could replicate that, that would be really, really cool. Now, so this is our build. I personally like the 3011 build. Uh, if there's something better than you guys wanna try out, please go for it and, and let me know in the, in the comments. Moving on to runes. We have the runes here. We have a ton of runes. You guys, the changes that came with phase three, it is insane. So we're just gonna start right at the top, okay? We're gonna talk about our headroom. Pandemic gives your dots a chance to crit. This is insanity, okay? Pandemic, the amount of damage we can now do by multi-dotting seven eight mobs at a time indefinitely with infinite uptime and infinite life regen it's broken pandemic is so so good and it's extremely easy to get you can get this rune in uh Feralis. you just do click on three things move them together kill a tree gg boom check wow head for that guide 
Next, we're going to talk about the chest rune. And the chest, Master Channeler. You have to run Master Channeler because this is what the bread and butter of the build is. This is what's going to give us our life drain, no longer being a channeled effect. It's very, very, very good, and it is absurd. So we're running Master Channeler, of course. Wrists. Now, this is where the fun, this is where the fun starts. We get the fun times now, okay? I like running Immolation Aura. Immolation Aura is essentially a free dot. What's better than that? You're going to be in melee range. You're pulling everything in. Bust out that Immolation Aura and just start letting it tick. It's, it's free damage. It's damage for standing next to things. I am looking for ways to exploit Immolation Aura and in solo dungeons and things like that. So if anyone is doing fun Immolation Aura shenanigans this phase, please let me know because... I love this spell. This is like my favorite rune. Now, that being said, there is a case where you can look at, instead of running Immolation Aria, run Felguard and pull your Felguard out and let it get to town cleaving the mobs as you're fighting them. If you're fighting like three mobs at a time, cleave is very good. Uh, if you're fighting seven mobs at a time, maybe Immolation Aria outscales it. I haven't done the math on it. I can tell you though that I have ran Immolation Aura and I have also ran Felguard. And what feels better for me is Immolation Aura. Uh, also, the farming locations that I've been choosing to do uh, have casters. So I've actually been running Felhound in, in there so I can get some interrupts whenever I need to. But more options is always a good thing, right? Always, always a good thing. And then the other option is Unstable Affliction. I haven't tried running Unstable Affliction yet. It's just another dot. It is a hard cast though. And the problem with having, you know, eight, nine mobs wailing on you is that you can't really hard cast anything. So I would say Unstable Affliction's out, but there's probably a use case for it somewhere. So we're gonna take Immolation Aura just for the sake of the build. Just know if you feel like taking Felguard, take Felguard. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference, but Immoara is so sick. It's such a great ability. Now, of course, we have to take Metamorphosis. As I was saying earlier in the video, um, someone did leave some comments and they did say they were not running meta with this build. So that drops their survivability down greatly, but it does open up Nightfall procs uh, into Shadow Bolt Volley, which is cool, right? So Take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. If you want to try that, give it a shot. If not, Metamorphosis is the way to go. This is what I'm using. Belt. Invocation is nasty. I still like running Invocation. At this point, though, you can really run Shadow and Flame or Grimoire of Synergy. Personally, I like running Invocation because refreshing the Corruption, Emulate, you know, Agony, Siphon Life with less than six seconds does the damage. Use your Shadow Bolt Cleave, it will refresh based on the um, Leg Rune of Everlasting Affliction. So I like that combo still. There was some reports of that not being the case, uh, of that not working. I don't know if you guys haven't noticed, if, if it's still broken, then it's still broken, then then don't run it, run something else. Run Grimoire of Synergy or something, because that that's also a very solid ability. Um, but I'm going to still take Invocation. I'm still going to take Everlasting Affliction because it's just crazy good uh, for these large, large pulls. Refreshing that Corruption, and it's it's really, really good um, for longer fights. And you'll see in the in the beginning of the video, there's there's some times where I mess up and like I don't I don't I don't refresh the Corruption fast enough. And in those cases, Immolation Aura just kind of cleans up the mobs anyway. So it still works out really well. And then in our feet rune, we're going to take uh, Demonic Knowledge, of course. Demonic Knowledge is filthy. So for those of you that don't know, Demonic Knowledge increases your spell damage by a value equal to 10% of your current active pets, stamina plus their intellect. Now this works with buffs. So you can literally scroll your pet you can get a priest to give it fortitude, a mage to give it intellect. The more buffs you can get on your pet, the more spell power you'll get based off of this rune. There's a trinket in um, Stranglethorn Veil from the Blood Moon event. It's very cheap. It's only five five of the silver uh, coins, 
which is only 500. You can usually get that in like one blood moon if you're in a good spell cleave. Uh, and it's really, really good. Demonic knowledge is really, really good. Now, that's kind of it, you guys. This is actually, actually the whole video. I know I'm, I'm kind of blasting through it and I know I'm not breaking it down as much as I did. If you want a more in-depth breakdown in the logic behind this and the things that we're trying to do with this build, I would recommend also watching the phase two one and I'll have that one linked in the description along with this talent calculator linked in the description as well. If you guys have any comments, concerns, put them in the com in the comment section below. Um, feel free to join my Discord if you guys want to, you know, banter or say some stuff. Feel free to follow the stream. It's twitch.tv slash winky. It's very easy. Now let's look at some um, tips and tricks for this uh, for the build and some potential farming locations. So tips and tricks for this build, you guys, it's going to be fairly straightforward. We're just going to be tab targeting and dotting as many things as we possibly can with Immolation Aura running. You're going to notice Immolation Aura is just going to be pulling things that you're standing next to all the time. So you get you get good tags, even if they're in a like a competitive area. The, the number one thing to remember is to try and keep drain life on the highest health target because you really want to min max the amount of drain life you get out of each interaction. If you put drain life on a mob that's about to die, and it dies with it, you have the full duration of the cooldown of drain life for you to not be gaining that health back. And in some instances, as you can see here in this Jadenar area, these mobs do hit kind of hard. I'm not in the best gear, so I really need to min-max that drain life. Other than that, though, it's pretty f straightforward. You just, just throw up your instant dots, and then once you see one or two of them getting low, you shadow cleave and the shadow cleave will refresh the damage on that also when you want to re-up your entire health bar as you can see in this this is what i'm doing you just pull one mob and you put drain life on it and by the end of the combat you'll be at full health full mana and you'll be ready to do another larger pull so it's just one of those things to to keep in mind okay now quickly i'll just give you three generic um farming areas that i i would i've been messing around with I still don't really know which the best gold per hour is, but um, that being said, these are the areas that I've been trying. If you go to Feralis in the north, there's these caves, these ogre caves here. There's also the ogres down here. These guys drop mage weave sometimes. I think these southern ones are a little bit higher level. They can drop rune cloth sometimes, but for the most part, it's mage weave. Mage weave sells pretty well, at least on Crusader Strike, which is the server that I'm playing on. So if you want to farm some Mage Weave here, these are two locations to do that. North Feralis, South Feralis. Feralis is pretty good in general for a lot of a lot of farms. I'm sure you guys can come up with better farms than me, by the way. I'm no expert on this stuff. Uh, where I've been recently loving, my favorite spot recently is actually in Felwood. I go to just south of Jadenar here. There are these, these demons that you can kill. These have a chance of dropping Mage Weave. They have a chance of dropping, it's a very high chance, by the way, of dropping Mage Weave. They have a chance of dropping Rune Cloth, which is selling for quite a bit right now on the auction house. And the bread and butter is Fell Cloth. The, the Fell Cloth has been between four to six gold per piece of Fell Cloth right now. I don't know what's going on with the economy, but hey, if I can AOE farm a bunch of Fell Cloth, I'm not gonna be complaining about it, you know what I mean? So this is where I've been. It is possible to do the AOE pulls on the Northern camp for these demons up here as well, and the Southern camp. The, the up here at the top, it is a little bit harder. You wanna make a, probably a little bit less pulls. There's a little bit more interactions as well with the enemies. Down here, the only thing you need to worry about is the pulling too many casters. And you can use Shadow Absorption you can use your Fell Hunter to, to cancel certain casts, things like that. Immolation Aura also pulls out the, um, the stealth um, enemies that you're fighting, which is really, really good. So this is where I've been farming. This has been my bread and butter spot recently, especially because I'm Horde. I can fly right here and just run straight down and start farming. So that's where I've been recently. The last easiest bread and butter spot for me is the Waste Wander pouches here, these bandits here in the middle of Tenaris. You can also run south and if there's, there's always mages, there will always be mages AOE farming at pirates, but if you can get a spot at pirates, this build trucks 
pirates. Like you will dumpster pirates with this build. So that's something to keep in mind. You can massively pull. You can just pull as much as you want with pirates. So Daenerys is another really good spot to farm for just raw gold, BOE blues, mage weave. You can do the ogres down here for a pretty good drop. I love farming ogre ogres. I've always loved farming ogres. They always drop like a gray weapon that vendors for like three gold or some crazy stuff. So that's always something I like to farm. There's probably a million other places to farm. You know, ogres in the Badlands come to mind. Uh, there's a, you guys know there's a million. If there's a better farming spot and you guys are cool sharing that on the internet that you don't want to keep it a secret or anything like that, drop it in the comments below. This build can also very easily solo dungeons such as um, most of Maradon. You could probably solo once you get your scepter. You could probably solo princess if you don't want to worry about finding groups. It'll just take a while. So that being said, I really appreciate you guys. I know that this video uh, isn't as in-depth as the previous one, but if you want to watch that one to get the general idea on how to level with that build and, and go ham with it, please do. I'll link it in the description. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you soon. I have a bunch of videos lined up, and a bunch of free time just hit my plate, so I'll be making a bunch of videos. Appreciate you guys. Again, join the Discord, follow on Twitch, subscribe on YouTube. If you, if those are the things you would like to do, I would appreciate it. If not, just, hey, thanks for making it this far. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.